Hi guys, this will, this will have to be a little longer. Uh, I'll be reading about three pages uh, from from an instance uh, where he discusses his meetings with the Marwari communists of Kolkata, of North Kolkata, North Kolkata, and uh, then he even meets famous Bengali novelist Tara Shankar Bhattopadhyay. But this is very interesting because uh, Marwaris are no longer communists. Communists when they came to power were had the most enmity towards marwaris because they were the business class and today's bengali communists hate marwaris for simply not being bengali one day i was reclining in my swivel chair during the lunch break with my feet on the table this is when sitaram goel is working as an executive in some firm in kolkata with my feet on the on the table and the latest number of the new age spread out before me new age is the communist weekly newsletter he subscribes to Suddenly this broker moved into my chamber my peon was away and could not stop him his face became bathed in broad smiles as soon as he saw the paper i was reading next he confided this is something i never knew about you you are a progressive then you must be knowing many other progressive people in bura bazar tell me the names of some of them i know practically all of them i told him that i knew no progressive ex- progressives except myself He went away after assuring me that he would see to it that I met quite a few of them and very soon he kept his promise a few days later he came to me with a pass for a shadow drama which the Indian People's Theatre Association a communist front was staging in a well-known theater house of Calcutta I went and saw it the next day and came away came away quite impressed it was a caricature of the congress leadership which was luring the common people into communal riots so that it could conspire with british imperialism behind the people's back it depicted how the streets of calcutta had been rendered unsafe for both hindus and muslims and how the only man who felt safe now was the white man it appealed to the hindus and muslims to unite and make the streets of calcutta unsafe for the white man once again as had happened during the days of the ina trials in the red fort and the rin revolt in bombay the royal indian navy revolt in bombay A greater gain from this theater attendance was my meeting with a number of other Marwari young men to whom my broker friend introduced me after the show. One of them now became my constant companion in the coffee house. He was also a broker though in the more prestigious share market. But it was it was his knowledge of communist leaders of India which really impressed me. He told me many heroic tales about Muzaffar Ahmed, PC Joshi, Dange, Adhikari, Rana Divyans and so on. In my ignorance I took them to be true and was filled with admiration for these great personalities. I did not know at that time that it was mostly communist mythology meant for the consumption of party comrades. But I could not help taking as true one tale he told me about a communist leader from Nagpur. He was imprisoned in the same jail as Acharya Vinoba Bhave sometime in 1941. Vinoba ji used to wash his own clothes every morning while communist while the communist leader sat nearby smoking a cigarette his clothes were never clean one day vinoba ji invited him to join him in washing clothes as observed and observed that it was quite a fun the communist leader walked away quite quietly came back with a bundle of his soiled clothes piled them before vinoba ji and said come on bhave have some more fun a few days after i met these marwari communists my place was visit- visited by a bengali comrade who was most probably the secretary of some party unit in Bura Bazar. He cited the name of my Marwari friends as his reference and invited me to visit the commune in which he lived along with some other party members. I went with him to a nearby place and met a dozen boys and girls who shared a small ill-kept room and a smaller kitchen. I was told that there were three married couples among them. This was my first and last visit to a commune. I did not like the look of it. Nor did I meet the Bengali communist very frequently. My only gain from this contact was that a hawker started supplying me a free copy of the Communist Daily in Bengali, Shadinata, and I was introduced to the Progressive Writers Association, another communist front organization. The president of the Progressive Writers Association in those days was the noted Bengali novelist Sri Tara Shankar Bandopadhyay. I had read some of his novels and thought very highly of him. I now hope to meet him in the association office one of these days. that turned out to be a vain because a uh, vain hope because i never met any writer whatsoever in that office during my frequent visits lasting over an year i did not particularly like the two novels of tarashankar which the comrades recommended very highly 
मानबंतर एंड हाँसुलीबाकर उपकथा द ग्रेट रईटर वज टू टेल मि लेटर वन ऑन लेटर ऑन दैट दिज व द ओनलि टू नवल्स हि रोट अंडार कम्युनिस्ट इनफ्लुएंस एंड दैट बोथ अफ दैम हैड फेल्ड हि हैड टू डिवाइज मानबंतर क्वैट अ बेट बिफोर इट बिकेम एक्सेप्टेबल टू हिज नर्मल रिडर्स A notable event of my association with the Progressive Writers Association was the staging of the Russian film Ivan the Terrible. It had been directed by the famous Eisenstein during the Second World War to whip up Russian nationalism against the Nazi invasion, and it had been hailed as a great achievement of Soviet cinematography. Someone in the association gave me a book of 25 tickets to sell amongst those I knew or could influence to see this masterpiece of progressive art. I succeeded in selling only a few distributed the rest and paid some rupees 64 from my own pocket. <coughs> the language of the film was Russian with titles in English. I could not make head or tail of the story. It bored me and I wanted to run out of the crowded hall. But when I compared notes with other comrades in the coffee house, I thought it better to say some words of appreciation. They were full of praise for it while denouncing the decadent Hollywood productions. Eisenstein came under shadow in 1948 and had to make an ab- an abject confession of his errors. Ivan the ter- Terrible was one of those errors. I was heading full steam into communism when I received a severe jolt. It was a novel by Aldous Huxley, Time Must Have a Stop, which had just appeared on the stalls. As I saw it, I was reminded of Ram Swarup and could not resist buying it, although its price was the only money I had in my pocket. but it was almost the end of month and i could look forward to my salary after a few days i had never read a book by huxley so far this one was quite a revelation of his unique genius i was enraptured by one of his one of its characters bruno contemplate contemplating the dark destiny of an erudite scholar with great compassion but what almost broke my marxist spell was his demolition of the dogma of inevitable progress which was the bedrock of all western thought including marxism during the 19th century he also questioned as a manipulative fallacy quote on quote manipulative fallacy the repeated reconstruction of social economic and political institutions to achieve a more equitable order of things his conclusion was that the roots of social evils lay ultimately in human nature itself a desirable order could not be built out of the desirable out of the desire soul of man a desirable order could not be built out of the desire soul of man shades of sri aurobindo i thought <clears throat>